The young and the restless spoilers, living while dying inside. Genoa City was no stranger to drama, but recent events had pushed the community into a whirlwind of suspicion, ambition, and hidden agendas. The intricate web of relationships and power dynamics was about to get even more tangled with the latest developments involving key characters like Sally, Audra, Cameron, Chance, and Sharon. Sally's strategic move, bringing Audra to Marchetti. In the bustling office of Marchetti Enterprises, Sally Chancellor was known for her sharp business acumen and unyielding determination. Recently, the company had faced its share of setbacks, leading to the difficult decision to let some employees go. Among those who lost their positions was Audra, a highly talented and capable professional whose departure left a noticeable void. But Sally saw opportunity in adversity. Recognizing Audra's exceptional skills and potential, she didn't hesitate to extend an invitation for her to join Marchetti in a more significant role. Audra, we could really use someone with your expertise, Sally had said during their meeting. I'd like to offer you the position of Chief Operating Officer. I believe you're the perfect fit to help steer this company back on track. Audra, although recently unemployed, had high standards for her next role. Her reputation preceded her. She was not just capable but also had a vision for innovation that could transform Marchetti's operations. However, accepting the position wasn't straightforward. Summer Newman, the company's president and Sally's close confidant, needed to approve the hire. Summer had her reservations, not about Audra's abilities, but about integrating someone so formidable into the existing team dynamics. I understand your enthusiasm, Sally, but Audra has specific requirements. Summer voiced during their discussion. Her expectations are high, and not every company can meet them. Are we prepared to offer her what she's looking for? Sally, undeterred, knew that bringing Audra on board could be the catalyst Marchetti needed. Summer, Audra is worth the investment. Her expertise and leadership can propel us forward. We need someone who can navigate these challenging times with precision and creativity. After careful consideration, Summer agreed, albeit with some apprehension. Audra's arrival marked a new chapter for Marchetti, one filled with promise but also potential friction as old and new team members adjusted to her leadership style. The enigma of Cameron, a ghost from the past? While corporate machinations were unfolding, another layer of mystery was adding tension to Genoa City. Cameron Kirsten, a name that had long been associated with power and fear, was believed to be dead. However, rumors and strange occurrences suggested otherwise. People whispered about Cameron's continued influence, orchestrating events from the shadows with an uncanny precision that left everyone uneasy. Was Cameron truly alive? His disappearance had left many questions unanswered. Sharon Newman, a key figure in the community, seemed to be deeply entwined with Cameron's mysterious plans. His ability to manipulate situations and people made him a formidable presence, even in absence. Why is Cameron orchestrating everything so perfectly? Sharon pondered, her mind racing with suspicions and fears. What is he up to in Genoa City that keeps everyone on edge? Cameron's unseen hand was felt everywhere, from boardroom decisions at Jabot Cosmetics to the personal lives of Genoa City's residents. His motives remained unclear, but one thing was certain. His actions were causing ripples that threatened to disrupt the delicate balance of power in the city. Chance's return, strengthening the GCDP team. Amidst the chaos, Chance Chancellor made his return to the Genoa City Police Department, GCDP, with renewed vigor. Having taken time away to reassess his career and personal life, Chance came back more determined than ever to uphold justice in Genoa City. His previous tenure had left an indelible mark on the department and his return was met with a mix of excitement and anticipation. Welcome back, Chance, greeted Detective Abby Newman as he walked into the precinct. We've missed your leadership and expertise. Chance nodded, a sense of purpose in his eyes. Glad to be back. Let's get to work and make sure we keep this city safe. His comfort and familiarity with the GCDP dynamics allowed him to integrate seamlessly, bringing a sense of stability and strength to the team. But beneath his confident exterior, Chance harbored a growing fear, the suspicion that someone close to him, someone he once loved, could be capable of murder. The shadow of doubt, Sharon as the suspect. 
As the investigation into Heather's murder progressed, Chance found himself increasingly convinced that Sharon Newman was involved. Heather's death had shaken the community. Chance couldn't bring himself to believe that Sharon, despite her flaws, could commit such a heinous act. He had known her for years, seen her struggle through her own tragedies, and had built a rapport that made the idea of her involvement almost unbearable. Yet, the evidence was compelling, and the pattern of deceit and manipulation matched Sharon's modus operandi. Struggling with his personal feelings, Chance decided to confront Sharon directly. Sharon, we need to talk about Heather's death, he began, trying to keep his emotions in check. There are things that don't add up, and I need your help to understand what happened. Sharon, ever the defensive one, shot back. I don't know what you're talking about, Chance. I loved Heather, and I would never hurt her. But Chance was relentless. He knew that beneath Sharon's composed exterior lay secrets that could unravel the entire case. I want to believe you, Sharon, but we need to follow the evidence, no matter where it leads. The betrayal unveiled Sharon's true colors. As the investigation deepened, Chance's suspicions about Sharon only grew stronger. He uncovered inconsistencies in her alibi, financial transactions that didn't make sense, and a series of manipulative actions aimed at diverting suspicion away from herself. The more he dug, the more it seemed that Sharon was meticulously covering her tracks, ensuring that her involvement remained hidden. Meanwhile, Daniel Romilotti, Sharon's ex-husband and Heather's father, found himself caught in the middle of the turmoil. His grief over Heather's death was compounded by the growing distrust between him and Sharon. Lucy, his daughter, also felt the strain, torn between her loyalty to her father and the unsettling changes in her mother's behavior. In a pivotal moment, Chance and Daniel had a heart-to-heart -heart conversation about the latest findings. Daniel, we need to look at the bigger picture, Chance urged. Sharon isn't who she seems. There's something she's hiding, and it's connected to Heather's death. Daniel, still reeling from the loss of his wife, nodded slowly. I can't believe Sharon would do something like this, but I trust your judgment, Chance. If you think she's involved, we need to find out the truth. Their collaboration marked a turning point in the investigation, as Chance leveraged Daniel's insights into Sharon's past to uncover hidden motivations and long-buried resentments. It became clear that Sharon's actions were driven by a deep-seated need for revenge, a revenge that had spiraled out of control, leading her down a path of deception and betrayal. The emotional fallout, Chance's inner conflict. As evidence mounted against Sharon, Chance found himself in an emotional quandary. On one hand, the facts pointed towards her guilt. On the other, his personal connection to her made it difficult to accept.